Based on Google, presently there are between 5.3 million to 1 trillion living organisms on this planet. How will we ever identify all of these living organisms and learn to differentiate between them? To do just that, we have a field in biology called taxonomy. So, welcome to BioWorld where we will explore the field of taxonomy. We shall study taxonomy in Chapter 14 of our STPM Semester 3 syllabus, where I'll start off with explaining the importance of taxonomy in biological sciences. But before I move on to the importance, it is necessary for us to understand the meaning of taxonomy. Taxonomy is a research method on how to classify, identify, as well as give nomenclature to all living organisms. As you can see, from the definition of taxonomy, there are a number of keywords that we need to understand better, such as classification, identification, and nomenclature. Let me start off with classification. Classification is when we group organisms based on observable characteristics. So for instance, if I want to classify these five animals, I first will have to identify an observable characteristic. So in this example, let's use fur. Then I will have to classify these animals based on similarities and differences. So, animals that are similar in that they all have fur will fall into one group. That is the elephant, giraffe, lion and monkey. While the animal that is different because it does not have fur falls into another group. So, this is a very simple introduction to the process of classification. Let's move on to the second keyword that is identification. Once we are done with classification, we shall then have to carry out identification. That is to recognize the organisms based on the Linnaeus hierarchy system. The Linnaeus hierarchy system was introduced by the father of taxonomy. Carolus Linnaeus. According to the hierarchy system, there are altogether seven taxons. You have to memorize all of the taxons. It starts with kingdom, followed by phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Let me elaborate further on kingdom and species. Keep in mind that the original discussion is the definition of taxonomy. But in the identification step of taxonomy, I'm going to also elaborate on the concept of species, as well as how species can be classified into higher categories in the taxonomic hierarchy, which includes the kingdom. All the living organisms on this planet, which I mentioned earlier, range between 5.3 million to 1 trillion, are divided into five different kingdoms. They include the kingdom Prokaryote, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. We will learn more about each kingdom when we study biodiversity. But coming back to the concept of kingdom. Now imagine if 5.3 million organisms are divided into five different kingdoms, each kingdom will contain a huge number of organisms. Among the seven taxons, 
kingdom is the taxon that contains the most organisms. And the organisms in each of this kingdom look very, very different from one another. This means the kingdom also has the most diversity. In contrast, the taxon of species has the fewest organisms with the least diversity. If we look at the human species, we all look the same in that we have a head, two hands, two legs, two eyes, one nose, one mouth. And if there is to be a difference between these human babies, it is only in their length, maybe their body weight, as well as their skin color. This diversity is called variation. The species is the final taxon in the Linnaeus hierarchy system. But what makes a species? Are organisms that look alike the same species? This simple definition is not accurate because the male and the female of the same species actually look different. Or in some cases, the young and the adult of the same species look different. In yet another case, we have organisms that are actually different species but look alike. So, the definition that species are organisms that look alike is not accurate. How about defining species as organisms that can reproduce. Even this definition is not accurate because we have instances where organisms that are of two different species like the horse and the donkey can reproduce an offspring called the mule. Or in the case of a crossbreed between a lion and a tiger produces babies either called a tigon or a liger. So what is the best definition for species? Species is best defined as a group of organisms that evolved from the same ancestor, has extremely similar structures as well as biochemical content, able to mate among themselves to produce fertile progeny, progeny referring to the offspring or baby, and the organism should be unable to mate with members of another species. So for example, these group of elephants, all of them originated from the ancestor called the Mauritherium, which is of course extinct today, and these elephants, which are actually the African savanna elephant, will not be able to mate with the Asian elephant nor the African forest elephant because they are of different species. Let's now return to the definition of taxonomy where we have classified the animals or organisms. And then we have to identify them based on the Linnaeus hierarchy system, which includes the largest taxon, that is the kingdom, and the smallest taxon, that is the species. Now, the lion and the monkey have many similarities. So, they are firstly in the same kingdom, that is kingdom animalia. They both have backbones, so they are in the phylum chordata. They both give birth to young and feed their young, so they are from the same class, mammalia. But after the level of class, we find the order, family, genus, as well as species of these two organisms are different. The lion is from the order carnivora, while the monkey is from the order primate. The family for the lion is Philidae. The family for the monkey is Cibidae. 
The genus for the lion is Panthera. The genus for the monkey is Macaca. And finally, the species for the lion is Leo. And the species for this monkey is Radiata. So this is how identification is carried out in taxonomy. Returning to the definition of taxonomy, we look at the final keyword that is nomenclature. Nomenclature is actually the process of giving the organism a name, a scientific name, based on the Linnaeus binomial system. Remember, earlier, to identify, we used the Linnaeus hierarchy system that has seven taxon. But to give the nomenclature to the organism, that is to give it a scientific name, we use the Linnaeus binomial system that only involves two taxon, which is the genus and the species. The language used to write the genus as well as the species is not English. Instead, it includes languages like Latin or Greek. When typing the scientific name of an organism, we change the font to italic. When we type, the first alphabet in the genus is in capital. The rest of the alphabets, including the species, is in small caps. However, since you will be writing the scientific name in exams, then you will have to underline the genus and the species separately. Now we are done with the definition of taxonomy, where I also introduced the concept of species and higher categories of the taxonomic hierarchy, we move on to the actual part of this chapter that is the importance. Why is taxonomy important? Taxonomy is necessary to help us identify and classify all known species. So in this way, we have a systematic organization of data. The next importance of taxonomy is to enable scientific discourse. This involves communication between scientists at an international level. Imagine if the scientist were to explain his biological findings using his native language the international audience will not be able to follow. However, if you use the scientific names, which is universal, then the audience will be able to appreciate your findings. So this provides for accurate communication between scientists. This diagram represents the evolutionary relationship between the species in genus Canis. Taxonomy enables us to build evolutionary relationships where we can link between organisms. We can start to identify the organisms that are closely related, such as the domestic dog and the grey wolf, because they are branches form much later in the evolution compared to the golden jackal which formed much earlier so the golden jackal is a distant relative of the domestic dog but the gray wolf is a close relative to the domestic dog this way we can make generalization of an organism which means once we know the characteristics of the domestic dog since it is closely related to the grey wolf, we can make a general conclusion that the characteristics of the domestic dog will also be shared by the grey wolf. This kind of evolutionary relationships also help scientists outline the biodiversity of life, meaning that we can determine 
what are the different species on this planet. It also provides for an opportunity for us to determine if organisms that we find are actually new species or variants of the same species. Finally, taxonomy also provides data on living organisms for other fields of research such as organic evolution, biological fields such as morphology, anatomy and physiology, as well as ecosystem studies which help the ecologists connect the relationship between organisms and the environment. So with that, I conclude our first discussion on taxonomy. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.